Come on, give him oh, praise. Praise God. Amen. Y'all ready for the word tonight? Are y'all ready for the word? Amen. Mm. You know what? I know we moved on to a newer style music, and, and, and you know, times change, the message stays the same. But there's something about them old songs. Come Every on, once in a while, I feel like yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was because when I was lost, sitting yeah. in the pew, oh. it, it was an older gentleman standing on this platform singing, Because he lives, yeah. I can face tomorrow. Okay, I'm on a choir, bro. I wish I would. John Mark in the fifth chapter. Amen when you're with me. Amen. Now, I want to point something out as we've been moving and we've been talking and we've been navigating uh, this, this series on demonology and weird things. Because y'all know we are people that like weird things. I mean, listen, Brother Mikey picks up dead people for a living. That's his job. Amen. I hope they pay him a lot. <laughs> but people are drawn to it. They're drawn to it. And Brother Josh, for so long it has been a subject that has been considered taboo. Right. And through the traditions of our Western thinking and it being considered taboo, we have become ignorant. Oh, Lord, help me. We have become ignorant to the subject. But really, as we glance and as we dig deeper through the life and the ministry of Jesus, we understand that his ministry was solely focused around deliverance. If say it was love, yes, it was love that drove a man to send a son so he could deliver. Oh, oh man. See, and as we've been navigating and we've been talking, Genesis 3, Genesis 6, from the moment that man was deceived in a garden, a deliverance ministry began. Right. Amen. Go with me to the book of Mark in the fifth chapter. Are you there? Yeah. Now, I know y'all like it when I draw parallels, so we'll draw a parallel tonight. Are y'all okay with that? Yeah. I want you to also go to the book of Exodus. In the 14th chapter. And just put you a pen or your finger there also. Because we'll be referencing back. Y'all ready? Yeah. This story starts long before Jesus ever arrives on the scene. I told you it really kicks off in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. And continues on. But we see a man come on to the narrative named Moses. And Moses does a lot of things that sometimes seem out of context. And we know the stories of Moses and how 
and the power of God. We get it wrong. Moses didn't part nothing. Uh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? God parted it. He just told Moses to speak. Austin, I know you sweat it. You're hot. I understand. But it wasn't Moses that parted it. It was God that parted it. He just told Moses to speak to it. See, sometimes we've got to understand I ain't got to do nothing. I've just got to speak to it. God's going to answer the rest of it. But we see Moses come on the scene and he, he parts the Red Sea. And we know the story. The children of Israel go across dry ground. They come to the other side. The enemy is swallowed up in defeat. And then they come to the threshold of the blessing. Right. But there was something dwelling There was something dwelling in the land of their blessing. Do y'all remember what it was when Joshua and Caleb returned back? He says, but there's... But there's giants in the land and we are but in their sight. So because... The 10 out of the 12 gave a negative report. They decided we're not going into the promised land, so we're going to wander the loss. How many knows when you leave God's direction, you automatically become lost? You may know where you're at, but you're really lost. So they're at the threshold of their blessing, and Moses, unfortunately, never becomes the one to take them into the blessing. He gets them to the edge of the blessing in the sight of giants scares them off. Right. Right. Are you with me? Yes. And in Mark number 5. Yes. Deuteronomy 18 makes a, a very profound statement and it makes a very powerful thing that we must focus on as we practice proper hermeneutics. And that is Deuteronomy 18. If you do not have it highlighted in your Bible, I suggest that you do. But Moses tells the people who were wanting an answer, when will our ultimate Savior come? When will a king arrive? And he says, when you see a prophet that looks like me. Uh -oh. when, when you get a prophet that mimics the things I do, know that he's already on the scene. Are you with me in the fifth chapter of Mark? Yeah. Then they came to the other side of the sea. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. To the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately, look at somebody and say, immediately. There met him out of the tombs. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Go huh. So hang, hang on. Let, let's, let's start. Can we start? There, there met him out of the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. Are, are y'all caught up with that? <coughs> Parallels. I want to teach you how to draw parallels. They came to the other, other, other. They came to the other side of the sea. What's funny, Moses took a body of people to the other side of the sea to a land that was at that point occupied by Gentiles and pagans. And it just so happens now Jesus is crossing the sea and people are following him. And they're going into a land of the garrisons, which happens to be Gentile land. Are you starting to draw one and one, two and two? It gets better. It says, and there was a man that lived among the tombs. Guess what's still in Egypt today? So, so 
what we need to understand is now in this story, and I want to give it to you before we go, there is some type of representation here from this man that is living among the tombs that, that the author, John Mark, probably got his gospel from, from Peter is what uh, scholars, I about said psychologists, praise God. Scholars believe that John Mark got his gospel from the testimony of Peter. But Jesus and the author here are painting a bigger story. And the story that they're painting is the man that lived among the tombs represented not just the man, but a nation. See, I'm telling what I'm trying to point out to you is that we have an issue as a nation. We, we have an issue as a collective whole. We're too worried about this, that, or the other, me, myself, and I. Really, as a body of believers, we got a problem. And this man that's bound among the tombs is a direct representation of Israel and where they Yeah, I like to use the, the southern term "were." Huh? That's where they were. Look at somebody and say "were." Were. 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 Y'all said it too right. Y'all got to put their "er" in. Were. were. That's where I were. That's, that's where we were. No, I don't want. To. Yeah. Brother Andrew, ain't you glad you're not always where you were? Amen. Huh? Yes. But as this man approaches, he lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. What were the Israelites in the land of Egypt? Slaves bound. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and And when he saw Jesus, listen, and when he saw Jesus from one thing that we got to understand tonight, Brother Mike, as we go through this, and we're, we'll get into the meat of the story here in just a minute, the, the cool part that everybody wants to hear where it's like, you know, y'all probably didn't watch Dragon Ball Z. That's our, that's our era. That's our era. Oh, woo! Huh? Did you watch Brother Josh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody wants to get to that part where it's like Batman, Superman, super power showdown, right? But we miss the importance of what we're reading right here. Listen. When Jesus was... Jesus was afar, the unclean thing inside of the man recognized. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. When? 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 Look at somebody and say, when? When? That's a powerful word tonight because it's not a matter of if. But God's a God of when, when he shows up, when he moves, when he speaks, when he crosses the sea on your circumstance. Angel, it says that when the unclean thing saw Jesus from See, the children of Israel have forsaken the traditions of the fathers. 
and they had turned a mile. Mm. When they seen when, when the unclean thing seen Jesus from afar, listen to what it did. He ran. He ran and fell down. Y'all, Jesus hadn't even opened his mouth. <laughs> no, 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 y'all ain't with me. Come on. I got to figure out a way to get this out. Okay. See, we, we, we get all tied up in these should have bought a Hondas. You know what I'm talking about? No. The crank and the weeder, the ta 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 should have bought a Honda. Right? And we think that our holiness is contained within how many times we speak in an unknown tongue. And we think about how many times our holiness is how nice we are dressed. But truly, spiritual warfare comes down to the, the root basics So is all I've got to do is get that thing in the... The near vicinity. You'll know when somebody's real filled with the Holy Ghost because enemies and demons around them will start rising up because they can't. So everybody wants to talk about, about, about unclean demons and unclean things and spirits of lust and pornography, spirits of adultery and spirits, all these nasty things in your life. And everybody wants to hear about it until the man of God starts calling them out of their own life. Until the man of God starts speaking about the dark things that you hide in your heart. But truly, here in the story, it says that when Jesus stepped off of the boat, that the unclean thing, which I've already taught y'all, really is a byproduct of Genesis 6, when the sons of God came down to the women, the daughters of men, and they created a race of Nephilim, or Rephaim, or Anakim, which was giants. And now the very same thing that Moses encountered when he crossed the Red Sea was the same thing that Jesus is fixing to encounter when he crossed the Red Sea of Galilee. That's why Jesus said, but I'm greater than your father Moses. So, let's pull it back in context. Jesus pulls up. We're looking a lot like Moses at this point in time. Jesus pulls up. He crosses the Red Sea in his John boat, 14-foot aluminum flat-bottom boat, and he pulls up on the scene. Listen, and as he steps out, unclean things yeah. begin to bow. See, Moses crossed the sea and stood at the threshold of the evil, but the men come back and run the bad report, so they turn around and left. But Jesus said, I've come to fix things. Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. we got to go back just a little bit. Night and day among the tombs on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. All right? But when Jesus saw him from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son? Come on. Come on. Yes or no? Yes, sir. What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the... Why do you think there was need, clearly, for John Mark to emphasize most high? We'll, un we'll uncover that, maybe. It turned to a no. It turned to a no. Praise God for this sermon. Listen, 
It says, what have you to do with me, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God.
Bible. Hey. <laughs> I adjure you by God, do not what? Amen. Where would he have gotten this idea from? That Jesus had come to torment him. Hmm. Because I do believe that there's fallen angels that are locked under the great river tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, somebody would need to study. Peter says that he descended into the deep recesses of hell and preached to the spirits. So this enemy knows what could happen to him. And he says, please do not torment me. Let's read on. Are you ready? For he was saying, come out of the man you unclean spirit. What is an unclean spirit? We talked about it. Anything that is contrary, anything that opposes what God has designed you to be. Come on. Mm. It's tough. I know. I know. Now, and, and, and I want to make it very clear tonight that not every symptom that you have is a demon. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and we, we have cartoon, what's the word, animated it? Yeah. Cartoonized it. <laughs> oh, Laura Berry, I'll pick up some good ones. Uh, she's like four shades of red back there. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to cast something out of you. <laughs> Brother Mike, not everything that would come against is a demon. That's true. It's not a spirit. Yeah. How many times have you heard that boy got a lying spirit? No, he's got a problem with his flesh that he cannot control. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So, as they go on, for he was saying, come out of the man anything that's contrary, anything that is not like or not what God has designed you to be. Something unclean. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? That's funny. And that we've missed four or five things, but listen, Moses asked, uh, Pharaoh asked Moses a very important thing. He said, What's your God's name? Huh? Another parallel that you could underline in your body, but what we're going to see is a flip because Jesus has really come to deliver you from evil and lead you into a promised land. Thank you, old Jim Paul. Old Jim Paul. What is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Why? Because this was Gentile held territory. And we will, this, a lot of these things will click with you next week when we go over the table of nations in Deuteronomy 32 and when God and disinherited the nations. Okay? And he begged him earnestly not sent out the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. Now, what is a pig to a Jew? It's unclean. It's unclean. So to a Jew, a, a pig is not to be touched. It's not to be ate. It's, you're not to own them. You're not supposed to be around them. Anything to do with a pig is unclean. And there just so happened to be, you know, sometimes it, it is conveniently coincidental that an unclean thing being cast out of man and just over on the hillside there's another unclean thing. Ain't it funny somehow how God that will line things up in your life? But here's what God wants you to get 
in the story, and I'm fixing the close. Now, a great herd of pigs was feeding there on a hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs. Let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the unclean pigs. Now, why do you think Jesus allowed them to go to the pigs? Because God's not designed you to be a host to something that's unclean. God hasn't designed you. He hasn't originated you. He hasn't purposed you to be a host to something that is unclean. But unclean things belong with unclean things. And clean things, I wish I had somebody right here. The reason that you're fighting the things that you're fighting is because you're putting a clean thing in the midst of a lot of unclean things. The people you hang out with, the music you listen to, the things you watch on TV, the things you Google when nobody's around, all these things in your life are, are bombarding your cleanliness. So he says, yeah, you know what? If you want to come out and go to the pigs, that's fine. But you're going to come out of him. Yeah. Mm. It's a trespass. It's a hitchhiker. It's a squatter, if you will. It has no business. It has no authoritative right. It has no deed over my life that was bought and paid for on a hill called Calvary. And, and, and things that are unclean in your life do not belong there. Amen. They belong Amen. with unclean things. Y'all ever heard the saying in the Bible, don't cast your pearls? He says, come out, stand with me. So he gave them permission. He gave them permission and, and he let them go into the pigs and the unclean spirits came out and entered pigs and the herd numbering about 2,000 rushed down into the steep bank. Now hang on. If we look at this in the Greek, when Jesus was approaching, the Greek says that it was active and continuous, which means that he was continuous saying, come out, 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 come out. Why? Because there's a bunch of them. How many times did Moses go to Pharaoh and say, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go? Finally, let them go, right? And as they crossed that sea, Pharaoh's army come in behind them. Y'all know the story of ground. But here the unclean things run themselves. into the sea, and they they drowned just like Pharaoh did. Here's the important thing as, as Andrew begins to play, play something. The story was designed, Brother Mike, to <clears throat> show you a representation of the greater body of Israel. How the body sick. Spencer, there's one thing that's for certain, baby. If I've got lung cancer, right? One part, one organ, one thing affects. I'm a podiatrist. But if I get bone spurs in my feet, huh? Because my feet were unwell, it affects the whole body. Right. And it goes on. If I lose my eyesight, it affects the body. All these things. But yet, we pray. And we want our nation and our state, our schools, we go all the way down to our family <coughs> to be whole, to be healed, to be fixed. But we won't fix ourselves. I've been counseling.
haven't suffered and broken and fixed other men with this world.
of gossip too.